Hello everyone, I'm Dianos. Today I'm going to show you how I write and organize my lyrics notes using Emacs. I take my notes using Zettelkasten, who you may, ha may or may not have heard. It is about taking small atomic notes and linking them one another to create your so-called second brain. Here is mine. This is a graph of all the notes I have accumulated the last few years. It has various types of notes, but we're mainly going to focus on literature notes today. Here are the content of my talk. We're going to start with bibliography management, which is how I take bibliography from the web and import it to Amax. Then we're going to talk about how I create literature notes using a custom Orgrom BibTech template I have. And after talking about that, we can talk about how I write literature notes, which is through annotating an article using Orgnoder. Orgnoder is a package that allows you to annotate PDFs using the org format and creates a supplementary org file to your PDF. Then we're going to talk about adding the literature to your Zettelkasten, which is a simple but important topic, and how you, uh, you can write permanent notes based on the info you obtained from this literature. Lastly, we're going to focus on the organization problem one might find when having a lot of literature for an assignment or an article or something and how I have tried to solve this with my package Zeldesk. This isn't the perfect solution, but it is what I have and I really like it. Finally, we're going to talk about how to compose the final article that you want to produce using this literature with the technique described in the rest of this talk. So let's begin the talk with bibliography management. Zotero is the bibliography manager I use. It is very similar to store articles with it and it exports to .bib, integrating with packages such as Organ BibTech and Ivy BibTech. When researching, I typically find a long list of articles from a search engine. I open the titles which have interesting titles through the abstracts, and save to Zotero those whose abstracts are the most relevant to what I want. From these articles, I typically won't read all of them because there are a lot, but I will select a few once I have collected as many as I want. Zotero acts as a way to store everything that might be interesting, while Emacs and my Zellcasten stores everything that is definitely interesting and I have read it already. And then we can move to how I create literature notes. I set the, the default action of IBBibTech to IBBibTech edit notes, which will prompt which with Orgrom BibTech mode active, prompts you for an Orgrom capture template when selecting something, if the node doesn't exist, or takes you to the existing node. And obviously you need to have this here to set the default action that was already there to a letter. Then we can move to my Orgrom reference template using Orgrom BibTech. And this, doesn't, this isn't so complicated, but it has some important stuff I want to highlight. Save it to the ref directory so I can remember where it is and it's classified as a literature note. And the file name is the site key, which is easy and small, but the title is the actual article's title. And give you the tag of the entry type, this is typically article, but um, it's, it's easy to sort things this way because not all literature notes are articles. And then give the keywords that are given by Zotero. Because why not? Ta tags here are tags from Zellcasten. These are the links to other files which are relevant. But this initial license is empty, obviously. And then this heading is where all the magic happens. This is the name is just not really so relevant, I just needed something that made sense. The properties are what matters. And mainly this one here. And the dollar file attribute um, finds the file of this specific literature and makes sure that noter that org noter works by default here. As I'm going to show you in a moment. This way, initializing the literature note, org noter works by default. That's all basically for the template. This is the point of the talk where we reach the first demo. This is about opening IP BibTech, selecting an article that I want to annotate, initializing the literature note. We can see that everything is inserted in for me. And if I open org noter, 
on this heading, it opens the article, as expected. I can read the article, can say I want to annotate something here, annotation, something. Obviously, annotation is not that simple as here, but I don't really have the time to actually annotate an article live. But you can keep going, and it's a good setup. Then close your order, and let's go pr presentation again. Moving on, this section is um, some stuff about my annotation process. As I said, there is no not enough time for me to actually annotate an article live, but here are some things about it. First is that I annotate with org order, which I absolutely love. It is great for annotations because you do them in org, which is an amazing format and gives you a lot of flexibility, such as adding to the Zellcasten, being initialized by a capture template, and other things. But also, you don't need to look for the notes inside the PDF, which is a problem you can have if you annotate on the PDF, and it is very annoying in my opinion. So I prefer having these notes, and I can only focus on them, but I can also see where they refer. The other scenarios are not so good, annotating on the PDF, you search for it, and if you don't know um, which section it refers to, then you need to look about it, and that is very tiring. Um, also, I am always annotated in English. This is not my mother tongue, but it helps me avoid the necessary mental overhead of translating while reading. I won't pay attention to what I read, and not to translate stuff. I will translate later. And when finishing an article, I like write a mini abstract myself, which contains what I think about the article. It doesn't need to be much, it's usually like three or four paragraphs, and it shows up things that are useful in the article, and what is mentioned that matters to me, so I can look back at it, and it is very easy for me to find what I got from this article, so where I will cite it on my actual project. Then last thing you need to do is add a node to your Zellcasten. This is very easy to do with being in org format. You can just have it in the org directory, which it automatically goes to, and link it to other relevant nodes, which is its index, because everything in my Zellcasten list has an index, but also every other permanent node whose contents are in one way or another mentioned inside the article. This way the article is in a network with nodes that are similar to it. Then we move on to the second demo, which is about a full fledged literature node. We can go on Orgon Note Find, search for references, go to this, and you can see it is linked to other nodes. And here is the mini abstract, and here are my notes on it. The last thing you need to do when creating the literature note is obviously create permanent notes based on what you read. If you never create, create these literature nodes, you will never get new information. So, for your Zellcasten to grow, you need to create such nodes. This means that the subject you're researching is not just literature nodes, but also has well-structured permanent nodes, which is what you will actually read. You typically only read literature nodes to see what gets cited where. What you will mostly read is these permanent nodes that you create from this knowledge. So, finally, we're at the last part of the talk, which is about organizing literature notes. And this is, in my opinion, the most interesting part, because it is very unique. It uses a package I wrote myself, and it doesn't have as much usage as the rest of the things I described so far. So, what is the problem you might find? Indeed, if you read a lot of things, you have a large collection of notes, and it's not the only thing you will think about. However, you do need to justify everything with citations, so you need to remember everything you read in these notes. You have done a lot of work, but there is still a lot for you to reach your final manuscript. Except if there was a hand little way to combine everything and sort it in a very easy way. Well, there is, and 
I think it came out pretty well. It's Zelda's Bloody Owl. It was inspired by this quote here from How to Smart Notes. And some Karens here talked about a desktop, which you um, have all the literature you want in that desktop, and you bring try to bring it in order. And by doing that, you can improve your ideas and have a structure so that your manuscript will then be very, very easy to write. Um, and as I say here, in trying to do this, I made something much more general than it needed to be. So yeah, you can use it for many other things. But before I show you some things about it, I want to introduce you to what a desktop is. It's essentially a, connect a collection of the knowledge you want to be able to see. You add things to your Zello desk, and using filter functions, you can only you only see these nodes and nothing else, which in my opinion is very handy. So, having said that, we can see these things in action for with the final demo of the talk. This is the third one. I will go to a index file of mine. This is three printing, and I'm saying I had last semester, and this has 20 backlinks, so a lot of things that I looked at for this assignment. I can say I want to add the kernel nodes backlinks to the Zell desk, and now I have a filtered version of Orbital Find, which only lists these 29 nodes. Very nice, right? I can also filter just the literature nodes, which can also use other UIs besides Orgrom, such as, for example, one I use a lot is the ivybibdic command. This takes a lot a lot of time, much longer than the Orgrom one, but has them in this UI, which in a lot of cases is more useful for me. The other very important thing is inserting these. For example, say I want to insert a permanent node, such as this, its title will become a top-level heading, and everything else will be inserted as expected. But the sorry, the most important thing for us is inserting literature, right? This is done with this command, and let's say I want to insert this. The title again becomes a heading, and this is the article title also. I store the psyche here, and everything else about it is also here. And I can add others, for example, this and this. And we have all of them here. I see it says this is the basic, so let's put it at the top. And then maybe I want to put this last. And this way you can sort things, and typically on the other side I have my manuscript and I look at what order I want to have things in and sort the articles and the permanent notes in a way so that each section can have the its own citations and its own notes, which makes writing, again, very easy, in my opinion. Finally, Let's go to composing the final article. This is our goal. We wrote and organized all these literature notes to put them in your final project. This might be an assignment or an actual scientific article. It is apparent that you have done a lot of work for this so far, but you don't need to do a lot more. In my opinion, this is the easiest part of the whole workflow. People consider compose com final article composition hard, but if you've done all these steps, you already have everything you want to ha add in the article from your notes. It's already there. You, a lot of things are copy-pasted. It's all in a coherent order. Connections are, to an extent, already there. And you know what citation goes where, so you can justify everything you write. The actual draft isn't there, but it is very easy, because now you just write things as you see them in your desktop, and connect them.
connections are base connections and making your glue good obviously are basically the only thing you need to worry but it those are very important because others will only see the final manuscript so if that's not good then the whole assignment is not good obviously so it's not like your work is done it's just very easy and with that i hope you like my talk because it is coming to an end now i want to thank you for your time i hope you enjoyed it you, you can feel free to email me at this address it, it, it has also been on every slide since the beginning i also have the github for zelda.dl here and they will be available for questions i will be viewing both the pad and the irc and we'll do a live Q&A after this. See you. Actually, before I go, let's show you the GitHub for Zelda's Lodiel. Here's the README. If you're interested on it, you can see more about it. And also have a very in-depth, I would say, wiki about it, with 11 pages. And talking about everything that happens here. A lot of what we discussed is in this section about literature notes. And these documents go a lot more in depth in how Zelda works and also how to use it. So if you're interested, feel free to um, read them. And if you have any problems, um, you can open an issue about it. I will be very active. Thank you.